imagine if this was in your backyard. Most of us only dream about having the opportunity to fly a place like this. But there's a lot more videos like this being made these days in the FPV community. In this video, we're going to look at tuning a 10-inch long-range quadcopter. So what's your name and, and, and uh, what's your rank and serial number? <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> oh, my name is uh, Gian Maria. Uh, I'm from Italy. I am an aerospace engineer. Uh, I have also a degree in uh, mechanical engineering and uh, drones are my passion, I would say. And uh, since I live in the mountains, uh, I decided to put together uh, a very interesting uh, quad that was uh, let me uh, reaching up to the very higher, highest peaks uh, in my zone. And uh, here is uh, the, the big boy. <laughs> yeah. You're actually on the, you're near the Alps in Italy. Yeah, correct. Yeah. In the, in the central part of the Alps, north uh, Milano. Cool. Yeah, it's two hours driving from Milano. Very nice. Nice. Close to the border to Switzerland, just for your reference. Let me just show a picture of your, of your well, you showed your rig, so that was pretty cool. You showed a picture of it, but I'll put this up right anyway. Yeah. These are 10-inch <laughs> props. Yep. And these here are two lithium-ion These are two success four, packs. Four. Yes, these are six packs, uh, six S packs. They are connected in parallel, so basically it's a six S two P, and uh, both pack uh, are uh, four thousand milliamps. So in total, I have eight thousand milliamps to to use. So, so I have a a, a micro version of this kind of uh, lithium ion thing, and one of the first things I know, so it's a four S. Okay. But what I noticed with these packs is that once you get out, like the voltage goes way below the, and it stays pretty low yeah. for the for the duration of your flight. Yeah. Like by the time you actually come in, fifteen minutes later, it's just like flying a boat. It's so floppy and that. So it's really yeah. it's really important. So I have the PID gains pretty high on my rig, and that and I think that's what uh, we'll see when we look at the the way what happened when we started to tune this. Yeah, at the very beginning, this quad was uh, meant to be 4S because I thought that uh, 4S batteries, especially in the 2P configurations, were lighter, and in fact they are. But uh, as you said, the, the voltage drop is uh, is uh, basically so high that, uh, as you said, it was very floppy in the air. So I didn't like it uh, very much. So I decided to switch to 6S, and uh, it's way, way better. Now I have... Uh, uh, a drop at the beginning of the battery, so from 4.2, as soon as I take off, uh, it goes down to 3.8, uh, and then from there it's going down uh, very slow. And I can fly with this rig for about 15 minutes, so yeah, I think yeah. it's, uh, it's very good. Yeah, as long as you don't hit hit a punch out, right? And then you drop the voltage <laughs> down even further. Yeah, of course, uh, you, you must be very careful. I mean, it's not a quad that uh, uh, you can use like a 5-inch quad. You, yeah, exactly. You must uh, bear in mind uh, what you have in the air. So you have to be very careful on the throttle, uh, pay a lot of attention uh, to the ampere consumptions. Uh, of course, uh, it's not for beginners, but it's very nice to, to fly this thing. There's another another pretty picture there. I, so I noticed you have the doubled up on the arms here. So this thing weighs quite a bit too, I guess, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, the, and the motors as, as well, they are quite big. Right. So the, um, the all-up weight uh, is around about uh, 2.5 kilograms. Wow. So quite heavy. Yeah. Yeah, so this will be, this is, this is, or it has been new to me tuning this kind of thing too. So um, a lot of people are getting into these now as well, and uh, the, these bigger quads. I'm noticing a lot more um, posts on the Black Box Facebook site. Yeah. that are devoted to like seven plus inch uh, copters so it's a thing <laughs> yeah uh, they're becoming uh, you know common and common every day so okay so i'm going to pull up the data so when you when you first came to me uh about your quad i um suggested for you to try this uh this basement tune method so 
technically you didn't do it in the basement, which for obvious reasons with a copter this size it's <laughs> a little bit ridiculous. But here's just a little video of you uh, just pitching, rolling back and forth a little bit, pitching forward and backward a little bit with this beautiful backdrop of your amazing backyard. And you did a series of little tests like this with different PD gains and PD ratios. So so what we did was was I, I, I was suggesting to you to just keep the PD balance at default in beta flight and then just slowly increase the gain uh, starting from 0.8 on the sliders PD gain to yep. 1 uh, 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, and then 1.8. And what we noticed was, as I had showed you before, that well, at, at at the really low gain, you you get this oscillation. As you start increasing the gain, you can see that the peak is coming down, yep. and the oscillation is getting smaller and smaller. So so this was a clear sign that to me that that you yeah you definitely need to increase the gain. It wasn't about increasing the D gain here, but it was about the overall gains and. Yep. Um, so as you increase them, then we, we, we sort of converged on the idea that, well, maybe this is the end of it. Maybe that's about as low as you're going to get that peak. So this is probably true uh, overshoot due to not enough D. And then I was thinking, that's still quite a bit of D. So then we decided to do a few more tests just for curiosity and yep. push it a little farther than, than 1.8. And so I'll just show that one. What is interesting is that uh, the same concept that Uwe Vitek was explaining, it's uh, the same approach that uh, we, we adopted in this case, because we increased the, the P, but basically the, 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 the I was uh, at the same level all the time. And so we were like tweaking the, the P to I balance. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never thought of that. So in a sense, the P to I balance was always changing. So what, what was he saying about that? When you have this oscillation that is uh, very long in frequency, so mm -hmm. where you have this very low frequency, that's a sign where your P is not high enough with respect to I. Right. So that's we were a good point. The same strategy to increase the P, to stabilize this uh, very long oscillation, and uh, yeah, you, we we see the result. So that's a good works. point. So yeah, so so for example, if I turn down the I term here, you probably get rid of some of that slow overshoot. Probably. As well. I I think you're right. There's it, it's sort of that ratio that's mattering, right? So as you cr yeah. increase P, then the ratio gets smaller and smaller. But as you said before, beta flight is designed like this, so we have uh, kind of follow uh, what uh, we have in front of us in beta flight. Yeah, and, and it's kind of nice to, to do something that's fairly systematic so that as you, you can start to understand what's really happening then as you're just pushing one dimension. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so then we added this, this case here, which is the, this is at 2.0. This is far, as far as you could go on the sliders. And yes, then, correct. And then I saw that it came down a little lower. So I was kind of thinking from here that maybe we're already at as low as it could go. So that was kind of surprising. So then you went ahead and figured out the ratio and you went beyond the sliders while maintaining yeah. that ratio, right? Yes, and I wanted to maintain that ratio and I went further up to 2.6-ish. 2.6, .6 is right. It's not a slider value anymore, but... Exactly. Maybe it should be though, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so then, well, you can see then the blue guy, this guy's now at 2.2 on the ratio, and it's not really changing much. So we probably reached the, the top there. Yeah. And I think in the end, you sort of converged on this setting, didn't you? Maybe the, the D gain, I think, was a bit higher. So yeah, then we, we you kept going a little higher, and you can see that it's not really changing at this point. Maybe it's sharpening up a little bit. And it's also interesting to, to see what you said to me, that is, at a certain point, uh, the, the delay is not improving anymore. And the even delay, exactly. The, the Peter. That's right, that's right. So at some point, you're not really gaining anything by adding, by going up to that extra level. So certainly at this point, you need you need to add more D. That, that was the key there to bring some of that down. And we had some reservation with adding too much D because you're not flying this like a like a freestyle quad where you're flipping and rolling all the time anyway, right? 
Right. So then, I guess I can't remember your final tune, but somewhere I think you converged on P90 and D70. Yes, One that's correct. Ones. Yeah. Between 65 and 70, that was the, the golden right. number. Right, right. Now, one thing I noticed with pitch, we couldn't really say much about pitch because it looked pretty noisy. But I have an explanation for that yeah. because at the very beginning, I, I thought that it was enough to just uh, hover a little bit uh, in order to, to, you know, gather some information about the, the tune of the chord. So uh, at the very beginning, I was not uh, really moving the chord. Right. I was moving more on the roll axis than on the pitch axis. And so that's why the pitch is not so clean. If you remember, exactly. we did uh, some uh, test part more. Uh, after that, where I moved the pitch a little bit more, and yeah. uh, we immediately found that the pitch was cleaner. Right, so right. My fault not to move the, the pitch axis uh, too much. Yeah, yeah. A um, very interesting thing is that at the end of the day, when we finished all the tests, we have uh, seen that uh, the, the pitch was uh, uh, kind of the same of the roll. And in fact, the, the values of P and D were exactly the same for both axes. It's very symmetrical. Yeah, yeah that is interesting. I, I wouldn't have predicted that from the uh, from the looks of your copter, actually. Yep. But yeah, that's that's good actually. It seems it seems fairly balanced, and however however it's dealing with that. So so in the end, you converged on the same values for pitch and roll. And then and then yaw was really interesting, right? So we never saw any major overshoot. Yaw is always a, is always a really bit of a crapshoot when it comes to trying to tune it. But one thing we did notice is that a consistent sort of uh, decrease in this really slow overshoot. Yeah. And a nice consistent increase in latency. So in the end, I think you did converge on something up around the low 100s, 100, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and correct. I like the blue here looks superb, really, and it looks yeah. really clean. So, so that's that's really nice. Yeah, you can feel it on the sticks. Yeah, that's why uh, I didn't want to add any feet forward because the stick feeling is very very nice, uh, like this. Perfect. So I really like uh, how it feels right now. It's uh, it's rock solid. Nice. And then we went uh, into checking a little bit uh, the filters, and that was interesting to to see that uh, right. we're moving uh, filters was uh, was not the right approach for this rig. Yeah, yeah, right, right. This this kind of shocked me. <laughs> yeah. So, so when I saw this, I thought, "Oh dear, what are we dealing with here?" And then uh, actually, this is not a good. This is not an estimate here because this is a throttle sweep. It, it often yep. does really bad estimates, so you actually need some pretty good uh, roll input to to generate some kind of estimate of, of latency. But I think in the end, when I looked at this, um, you did another test to show the latency, and I believe it was around three and a half milliseconds, which. It's not super high, but I, li I like to try to get it under two and a half. But then I come to realize that this is a, um, a Bosch gyro, right? It's it's, yeah, it's right. the Radix flight yeah. controller. And so uh, they're, as I understand it, I think that they what what's happening is the internal uh, filter is cut off is set higher in those gyros. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, with the idea that you'd filter a little bit more in the software in Betaflight. And so that's why your um, pre-filtered gyro is a lot noisier here than typ the typical setup. Um, a lot of bands here, too. I, I, I found that strange. But then I'm, I'm using a bi-blade as well on uh, on a 6-inch, and I, I get some really weird things going on here. Where actually the, the, the fundamental, which you'd think is around here, is actually weaker than the harmonics. Yeah. which is kind of strange um, anyway that's it, it's nothing to worry about too much but I think we tried a few things we reduced the, the filtering until we got a phase delay that was around 2.5 milliseconds on, on the gyro and what was interesting uh, was that uh, on the gyro more filtering was uh, was good basically even if uh, we were increasing a bit the phase delay what was not good was uh, increasing the filtering on the D term. We went down to 65 hertz uh, with the bike rock, but uh, the the phase delay on the D term was uh, was so high that I had some weird oscillation. And I exactly, had yeah. You you end up cranking up this activity yeah. down here, and and it starts going nuts. It's pretty clean here, though. I mean, this is obviously a different different uh, file there, but yeah, yeah. You certainly learn really fast how low you can go with that. <laughs> Props. <laughs> and the yeah. cool thing 
is the hub. That's the only up. downside with with everything greater than say six inches that the the selection of what what's available out there is much more limited. But yeah. but it tends to be, I think, when you get to some of those bigger props, that they seem to be more specially manufactured. So maybe there's a little more care taken into the way yeah. they're designed and stuff. I don't it, know. It, it is true. It is true. And in particular, these are plain props. I had to buy two pushers and two pullers. Right, right. But these are very, very well known among the macro code community. And uh, they are excellent. I love them. It's great. Yeah, because uh, with uh, such weight, uh, you you must have very reliable props. Because uh, there are some other props, uh, but they are just exploding in the air. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't want that. You don't want that when you're up in the mountain. No, no, exactly. <laughs> well, that's awesome, man. I, I, Keep in touch. Yeah. And uh, we catch up again uh, as soon as I have some data from the 7-inch, okay? Sounds good. Okay. Great. I wish you a good day. You too. Bye.